In today's video, we see an even snowier set of model runs than even yesterday. It seems like every single day we're accelerating here with the amount of snowfall popping up from these models, and we now have two major snow systems popping up, and they look like they could be big ones. As we have Arctic air moving in, southern moisture being flowed in by our southern stream, it is all the perfect ingredients for massive, massive snowfall. So we're going to go over the chances of that, the timing, and everything you need to know related to the upcoming pattern. So let's go ahead and dive into things, and of course it is not Arctic right now, it's not snowy, it's not cold, it's actually extremely mild along the eastern states. It was like 75 today, felt like summertime, and I hope you guys enjoyed it because it is about to come to an end for tomorrow and it's very likely that it's going to be a while before we have warm air like that again. Now, we have thunderstorms in the southeast as we kind of pass through this. We see that a lot of that moves through and by the time we're looking at tomorrow afternoon, we will for the most part be in a much more typical wintertime pattern. So again, that very mild air comes to an end. And at the same time, we actually see a lot of warmer air building in for the west, which we can see a lot of high pressure out there, one over Oregon, very strong, and then one even stronger there for Colorado. So a lot of high pressure, a lot of warmth deflecting these storms underneath or over top of that kind of dome of dry, cold, or warm air, better yet. We do see some snow showers tomorrow, perhaps if you're in the Ohio Valley or areas up there in the northeast close to the lakes. We do have a little bit of lake effect coming off of those lakes, it does appear, so be prepared for that. As we kind of move forward, we're not too far off from our first threat of a major snowstorm, and it's one we've been tracking for a long time, actually. We got really, really big hits from the GFS model, which we're going to take a look at in a moment. But Monday's still cooler, a lot quieter, a lot drier, though. Um, so definitely uh, kind of slowing down with the storms for a minute here. Tuesday the 13th, we do see a bit of a clipper system trying to move down into the Great Lakes, a 990 there, and this low is actually going to bring with it even more Arctic air, but for now you can see it is bringing some snowfall to areas in Canada and also areas there over the Great Lakes. Now, as we go ahead and continue to move this forward, we're going to take this straight to Wednesday here, and this is when we kind of get the building blocks for a much more substantial snowfall event first off we have the arctic air just diving southward as you can see behind all of this low pressure so that's moving in and we get this really rich area of moisture around for the gulf in the southeast and that's going to come into play in a, in a pretty big way uh, things are going to get extremely interesting as we kind of move this forward this is again wednesday the 14th into thursday the 15th we could see this jet stream really turning very vertical off the east coast we do have a low here near New Jersey, some snowfall ongoing for West Virginia, Virginia, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, as a low tries to form halfway up the coast. We call these still a nor'easter, but it's called a Miller B nor'easter when they don't move all the way up the East Coast, only from about the halfway mark around the mid-Atlantic, something like that. As we move this forward, we see that low does eventually impact New England as well as the rest of the Northeast there, and then we're left with even colder air after that one's said and done for Friday the 16th. Saturday the 17th where we have severe Arctic air even cold enough to cause some snow showers there in Texas as you can see so a pretty big testament to how cold it is also areas in Virginia and North Carolina seeing some snow showers around for Saturday the 17th of course this is very far out and those are some pretty small details so that, that can of course change but I want to use that as a reference for how cold it is on this particular frame looking forward towards Sunday we see something very very interesting uh, shaping up here as we get this area of moisture once again clearly your jet stream is doing a little dip and run out of the gulf there so it's able to get a lot of that energy and it's trying to pull that northward and you can see that that low does get pulled northward but we're kind of in between some arctic air right here so we end up actually getting a little bit too much warmth for that to be a massive massive snowstorm on this particular model run then we see the great lakes in northeast deal with another clipper system here after the 20th so that looks to be a common theme and then even another one there getting some pretty major snowfall in the northeast towards the very end of the model run. But where the really exciting things happen is actually going to be on your GFS model. Of course, that was a pretty snowy European model run compared to what we've been previously seeing. Uh, so definitely uh, a very, very interesting 
situation from the G the European model much more interesting than what we've been dealing with, but the GFS is going to take it to a whole nother level. This is one that we've been tracking for a long time, 15th, 16th. We originally saw it bringing snowfall to very far eastern, south and North Carolina, and then it trended yesterday to where we were seeing that spread out a little bit more throughout cent central and uh, more western South Carolina, North Carolina, even Virginia. And I told you guys, look, it's probably going to keep coming northwestward. And now we see this being suggested much further inland, uh, just as we kind of predicted, bringing some pretty intense snowfall here throughout still areas in the Carolinas, Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, D.C., Pennsylvania, including Philadelphia, up into New Jersey, central and northern New Jersey, New York City, and southern New England. As we have a 987 millibar nor'easter offshore, we get some pretty heavy snowfall just about five or six days away. This is not a long range projection, guys. This is something that would be coming up very, very soon. And of course, again, we'll kind of reiterate on this European model just to kind of go back to it. We do have pretty good agreement. Uh, let me see the exact hour that we're at here. So three, let's see right here. That is not really a huge difference. So both of these models do have a substantial snow event here for parts of the mid-atlantic and northeast coming up in just a few days all of a sudden so we've obviously been tracking this but again the models weren't showing it connect yet and a lot of people will tell me you know why are you uh, saying that there could be snowfall when the models don't show it uh, sometimes you don't it's not about what the models are exactly showing sometimes you got to be looking for those puzzle pieces because if all the puzzle pieces are on the table somebody could come along and put them all together and that is what we've seen happen here and you always have to be alert for that type of thing to take place and that low just kind of sits around guys and brings really heavy snowfall throughout the mid-atlantic coastline in southern new england even up into boston and the coastal main areas as we kind of close out friday the 16th into saturday the 17th Here's where things get super interesting though. Just a couple of days later, 17th, 18th, we've already got some moisture building. We also have this on the European model. I just set up a little bit differently, uh, a little further south on the European model here for that 18th time frame. The GFS gets it a little bit more connected with that cold air where we see Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky. Still, this is within 10 days. This is right around actually seven days out. So the medium range, not the long range another snow threat popping up here. And this one's bringing widespread snowfall for some of the deeper south, the lower Appalachian mountain range, all the way through the mid-Atlantic and the northeast. Another just massive, massive snowfall event for these areas. And that actually does develop into a nor'easter type snow system offshore. I don't know why we're getting valley rainfall so far northward up into Canada here. I don't know if something went wrong with this particular model run. But it looks like we're getting really weird profiles of rain where there shouldn't be. So I think that this is, for the most part, an error. Uh, you can't see it on screen, but I'm seeing rainfall popping up north of snowfall, even pretty close to the Hudson Bay, which would be crazy cold on this frame. So there is a, a bit of an error there with the precipitation typing, but you get the point. Uh, we do continue to see cold air after this, and honestly... Not really a bad pattern later on either as we still have a lot of energy around the southeast and Gulf states. We still have a lot of Arctic air at play, so there's no telling if there's going to be even more threats at play. We actually do get a little bit of a more horizontal system moving through the plains, Midwest, Ohio Valley, and Mid-Atlantic there, as you can see, close to the end of the model run, which is very far out, so take that one with a grain of salt. But uh, just kind of goes to show that we're remaining pretty favorable for snowfall even pretty late in the model run. Now, as far as temperatures, again, we're very, very warm right now, especially along the east. We cool down immediately for tomorrow afternoon as we get blues and greens starting to move in. It's not the most massive Arctic blast in the world, but it is colder, and then we get a little bit of a warm-up. Again, for Tuesday the 13th, Wednesday the 14th a little bit as well, and then we get some massive Arctic air moving in for Thursday the 15th, Friday the 16th, where we might have a snow system along the eastern seaboard there, and that kind of just sticks around the east coast all the way past the 20th where we get an even more major cool down here as we start to get these purplish blues which are 15 to 25 degrees below normal very very substantial cold air moving in and then we get another massive blast of that as well for the northeast so very very cold even another one there at the very end of the model run this is the european by the way not the gfs so uh, the gfs is actually a little bit more too uh, opportunistic with the cold which is interesting that we typically stick with the european model for most things Total precipitation, again, uh, we see another day where we're getting less and less out west. And again, that is due to that higher pressure where, again, these storms are moving over 
and under that area not going through because it's like oil and water. It doesn't, the dry and, and moist air doesn't want to kind of mix. It wants to move around and do this kind of weird dance. So that's why we're getting the moisture just getting deflected away from this high pressure area. A lot of this kind of just meets up over the east and we get a lot of activity there as we're moving into a very cold period. So that is, again, the two puzzle pieces for snowy patterns we have right now. And we've been seeing that for about a week now. As we take a look here at the total snowfall on the European model, we do see very, very well below average snowfall out west. That is crazy for January. We do see the northern plains straight through a lot of the Midwest and into the eastern states are seeing their fair share of opportunities. And we're actually getting really good amounts for the Midwest, Great Lakes, interior mid-Atlantic, and then basically the entirety of the northeast here. But let's look at the really, really interesting one, which is the GFS model, which is where we really get hammered out here in the east for the Ohio Valley, mid-Atlantic, and northeast. These three areas just getting tons and tons of snowfall, one to two feet on this whole model run. So very snowy from now through the end of January, according to this model. Even some very interesting snowfall far to the south, which again, isn't even 10 days out. It's in the medium range, but we still want to take it with a bit of a grain of salt just because that's a more rare event. And this is kind of the first we're seeing of it on the models. We want to just let it kind of simmer and cook and see what happens. Uh, interestingly, we do see a lot more activity out west on this model compared to the European model. That's a massive difference. So we'll have to see which end, which one ends up being correct for the most part. But with all that stuff being said, guys, be sure to subscribe because we upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.